Hey guys, Dean Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We went spelunking in the last episode. We were able to rescue Mira from her terrible fate of being lost in that cave. And today, we are headed to Hearthome City. But, we've got a little bit more cave dwelling to do. Thankfully this time it is of the visible variety. And actually kind of the focal point of this game. It is going to be a episode mostly spent in the bowels of Mount Cornet. So that's kind of where we're at. A lot of the episode today is going to be spent doing that. And I also switched out the team quite a bit. So I thought I'd bring back some other guys that haven't had a lot of opportunity to shine, whether they'll be useful or not, I don't know. But Dimitri, Sharon, and Steven, back from a temporary reprieve, hanging out in the box. We'll get them some experience today, see what happens. Like I said, I'm going to continue to try to mix the team up. And that's for variety, but also because I want to add a little bit of a little bit of difficulty to this game because it's not not really that challenging. So I'd like to try and spice it up a little bit. All right, so let's show this ponytail our ancient power. One of the things that I actually was running into, oh boy, one of the things that I was actually running into a lot prior to doing the Wayward Cave. There was a ton of time spent running into Ponyta. There is a, an absolute butt ton of Ponyta outside the cave itself, which is really frustrating. Okay, so this Patrisu needs to go. Samuel is in a bit of a rough shape, so we'll swap him out. Don't want to run into too much trouble here. And we'll use Dimitri. We're gonna try to mix things up. Now Coronet's a little scary, but we should be okay. Mixing up the team also does add a little bit of additional challenge because my Pokemon as a whole will be under leveled, which is good because this game is pretty easy. And I'm trying to show off more of it. I know that it's really easy to just, man, this Patrisu can just kick rocks. I know that it's really easy to just blast through the game with, you know, two or three Pokemon or whatever. and. I'm not trying to say how you play or how you don't, but I think it's kind of fun just to mix it up, which is new for me in particular because playing through these games, I used to do exactly what I just said I wouldn't do. So, ooh, okay, that's not fun. Dimitri feeling a little bit, <laughs> didn't really get to contribute. That's unfortunate. It's not gonna get any of this experience in this Pachirisu. So that's a little, a little bit of a bummer, but we do have revival plants, so. There we go. Got three level ups just off of that one move alone. Um, scary face is okay. I mean, we do have leer, so I guess scary face is like a super leer. Leer being the type of move that will reduce defense by one stage, and I think scary face reduces it by two. So it's a little bit of a, a double up, which is kind of nice. And welcome back to Sharon. She's taking Miguel's spot right now. Okay, so who will take the space of Dimitri? It will probably not be Brandy. That'd be a poor choice. Let's do, uh, let's do, <laughs> let's do Sharon. Let's bring Sharon into the fold here. Her Intimidate will actually be pretty useful. I don't know if Ponyta is much of a physical attacker, but I don't want to deal with any more of those shenanigans. But I do have five revival herbs, which are essentially revives. And we don't really get a ton of those early in the game, we don't really have much of an opportunity to to get revives, at least not this early. So Dimitri now being brought back from the realm of being fainted, we'll get some experience. It's one of the downsides of the experience hall, is that if you are fainted, that's it. You know, you don't get any of it. So either you do have it or you don't. Also, his hip, hypsmosis. Hypnosis is a great move. Let me see. I do really actually like the opportunity to have a move that does put Pokemon to sleep. The only downside is that Brandy is very slow 
and hypnosis is incredibly inaccurate. So I'm going to pass on hypnosis for now. I think we'll have better opportunities to use moves that will put Pokemon to sleep later. So there we go, beating up on some children. I love it. All right. That feels awesome, doesn't it? Okay, so let's go ahead and patch the team up a little bit. That was a bit of a doozy. And, you know, it, it really shouldn't be. But then again, like I said, I am kind of putting myself against the odds a little bit by using Pokemon that are somewhat underleveled. But, you know, what's the point of playing the game if you can't give yourself a little bit of a challenge? All right, and here we have another hiker. I shouldn't say another hiker, we have a hiker. And he's got fuel in his tank. So he wants to he wants to beat up on those young whippersnappers. And I always get a big a big like kick out of like the names of the trainers in this game. Like Justin is a fine name. There's I'm sure there are probably plenty of hikers named Justin. But when I think of a hiker, I think of more along the lines of maybe like a uh, like a Rutherford or you know, a Jameson, perhaps. Something a little more old-timey. Wilfred. Is that a woman's name? A guy's name? I don't know. Who knows? Name yourself whatever you want. So we don't really have a ton of type coverage here, which is going to make things a little bit difficult. But we should hopefully be okay. Dealing with a Bronzor. Let's see what uh, Dimitri can do. We do have a Ghost type, which is nice. And it would be fun to use Drifloon on the team. Usually when I go through and I plan kind of what the team is going to be, I don't really have a set type of Pokemon that I need to have. I'm just kind of going for coverage here and trying to not make this a miserable experience for myself. So I like to have Pokemon that are mainly fast. I like to have Pokemon that are strong. Yada yada. You know the deal. And there's the good old Justin hiking pushover. So here's Mount Coronet, just east of 207. Get used to this place, because we will be here a lot. And it would be really strange if perhaps we met somebody important in this cave. I don't know if that's going to happen. Oh. Perhaps somebody really into anime? Looks like we're about to get a history lesson. So I'm not sure who this guy is, but he seems to be affiliated with Team Galactic based on his spiffy vest he's got. Or maybe that's a jacket. I'm not sure if the sleeves are connected. Nothing beats a nice heated vest inside a cave like Mount Cornette. And we gleefully get out of the way. And that's it. <laughs> so that's... Wasn't that great? We got a little bit more information upon the, the ins and outs of Team Galactic. And I want to see if I can use the dowsing machine here. If I can figure out how to use the buttons real quick. Perhaps there's a an item nearby? I wonder. What do we think, guys? I bet there is. This is not doing what I wanted it to do, but that's okay, because... Is this not... Okay. I was not expecting... <laughs> I was not expecting a wild encounter. I was almost certain that that one rock would have an item in it. Usually when there is just kind of one standalone rock by itself, there is a good chance that it's an item. But I don't know if I just like hit it wrong or something, or if it's just not. Okay, so this is not wishful thinking. My bad. Sorry for having fun, game. Okay. One of the things that I do enjoy is that they have kept up the consistency in rock smashing being a thing where you hit it once to call Bidoof, and then it just lets you do it infinitely. It's really nice if you had to have that that repeated message over and over and over again that would get pretty old. Okay, so there's really no point to going that way. 
It's just a walkthrough. It's just another opportunity for me to misjudge my steps and go backwards and run into a Geodude for the first time. Okay. Geodude, new Pokemon from Generation 1. Very interesting type. Rock, never seen this before. So here we go on the east side of Mount Coronet. We have a little bit of a little bit of a trek to get there and some trainers to fight. So let's get busy. How are we supposed to beat a big man? This big man, Robert. See, that's more that's more hikery. Robert, Bob. What do you think he goes by, Robert or Bob? But yeah, I have uh, swapped out the <laughs> I swapped out the Pokemon on my team that are actually pretty good at dispatching what we're dealing with here. My team is made up kind of the I'm gonna misfit toys here. Gonna be playing a little bit of catch up. And without having the right types, we're not going to really be able to have a whole lot of mustard to put behind our moves. Remember one of the coolest things back in the day was when they introduced weather modifiers. Now the weather, weather, weather modifiers themselves weren't that cool, but I do remember when I was younger and I was playing through Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. Let's see, stockpile. What does stockpile do? User charges up power and raises both its defense and special defense. This move can be used three times. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's that sounds cooler than focus energy. A little bit of a buff. Cover up for the defensive misgivings of Drifloon. And it wants. Oh, learns two moves at the same time. That's interesting. Now it wants to swallow. Okay. Stored using stockpile absorbed by the user to heal its HP. Storing more power heals more. That's interesting. Seems like a two part move. Um, that is interesting. Let me see here for a moment. Let me think about it. Massive damage to a target affected by status conditions. Do we need to really bring ourselves back with HP? Or do we want to do massive damage? I mean, we already have a ghost move, so... You know, having a the ability to heal ourselves sounds pretty neat. So we'll try it. That might be a mistake. If that's ever... Oh my gosh. It learns all... This must be like a combo set. Okay. Well, we're going to pass on that one. So... We'll swallow. We won't spit. So that's fine. We're more committed to, uh, to providing the best service possible. Okay. So back to what I was saying. I remember when weather modifiers were put into practice. And in Ruby and Sapphire Emerald, there's a weather station. And you have to go and stop the weather station from being taken over by the Aqua or Magma Goons. And when you do, your prize is a cast form. Now, cast form as a Pokemon is useless, but it has all those forms that when it changes with the weather, it looks pretty heckin' cute. So there's that. You get that. So this guy looks like he's ready to do some karate. He's a master of the martial arts. And his name is Kyle. Looks kind of like, uh, he looks like a Kyle. We'll say that. So Brandy being a psychic type, a very slow psychic type. Let's see what confusion does first, and then maybe we'll we'll somehow be faster than a Machop. I don't know if I believe that. Ooh, but it's using revenge, it's probably why it's going second, but that psychic subtype was what prevented us from getting our butts whooped right there. Because fighting types pretty strong against the old steel type. So we're just slowly gaining experience, not making a ton of progress in the realm of evolutions and such, but we'll get there. We're kind of in that in-between phase. Nice little X speed, which probably won't get used, but maybe it will if I made a pinch in these mysterious looking things. 
will be handled by a future HM. This game loves its HMs. I don't know why they put so much effort and energy into programming so many of them. And I thought there'd be an item here, but no, because this game hates me having fun. So here's another hiker. He wants us to share some food. Sounds like he's underprepared. He needs a granola bar and a half. That's usually a good way. Jonathan, yeah, okay. I can, I can believe a Jonathan. He looks like he's, uh, he's a big boy. Maybe could use himself a nice snack. Like D Mike, also a snack. So we will hopefully make our way to. Oh, I didn't know Onyx can learn Curse. That's interesting. Curse is a move that has a different properties depending upon what type of Pokemon learns it. If it's a ghost type, it can curse the opponent. But in this case, being used by another type, Onyx, any Pokemon that's not a ghost type, when they use it, it will lower their speed, but raise their attack and raise their defense. And then sometimes you have a Pokemon like Onyx that also knows Sturdy, which is really annoying because then it delays the end of the battle by a turn, which is really heckin' dumb. But that's okay. We still like Onyx. It's one of the OGs, even though it's not really a good Pokemon. I think I mentioned that. I waxed on about it a little while ago in another episode. Because Onyx has a big rock snake looking all intimidating and powerful. Its attack stat is really horrible. It gets made up a little bit when it's evolving into Steelix, but if it wasn't for that evolution, it would be in really rough shape. Because Steelix is fantastic. Massive defense, Steel type. The attack has improved somewhat, but yeah, Onyx is just very underwhelming. Which is sad, because I think Onyx is a really cool design. All right, so we're gonna try to sneak out of this grass here. We're gonna want to fight this woman. She's trying to get into a super contest. That's something that we'll be looking into in the future. She's got a Combee. Now Combee is an interesting type. It is a B Pokemon, as you can see. Try B. That has a variant when it's female versus when it's male. So kind of in an allusion to the actual world of bees you know there is a queen bee and then everybody else is just kind of like whatever so combi as a male does nothing it doesn't evolve into anything it has no ability to be super cool however if you get a female combi which will have a little bit of a, it's got a red triangle on the lower one on the lower third one it can evolve and that evolution is pretty darn cool and I might have one, so we'll go on about that later. A little bonus thing that I'll add on eventually in the future. And super cool of Rosalia to poison us, just like our own Bart. Bart has evolved into Rosalia, looking incredibly beautiful, as he always is. And we get three level ups. This is what's nice, though, about the experience all is you can get a lot of level ups going on all at once and no moves interesting i think that sh the way that the clouds are moving is kind of cool that they have it like going on throughout the battle but when they're completely shadowed it looks kind of ridiculous all right some berries for us to steal what we got these are all looking like berries that you use as part of pofin making which is a mechanic will encounter briefly in the future probably not going to do a ton with it because it's kind of tied to the whole contest thing and i'll show off the contest a little bit but not a big contester it's something worth looking into and if you're into that that's fine but i kind of like the training and battling a little bit more Let's see what this house is the berry master's house he's gonna give us free berries if we just get in the back of his van that seems like a fair trade huh Let's talk to these women. I would like some plump and Oh, you can buy berries. Oh, that's interesting. No, we don't need to buy them. There's plenty of them around the world. Forgetful type who loses track of where berries are planted. Yes. 
Awesome. So you can learn where your berries are on the map. This berry master is not going to charge us. He's going to give us a home egg. Assuming that's supposed to be like pomegranate. Pomegranates are interesting. There's a fruit. You can eat the seeds. And apparently that's something that people like to do. I've never actually had a pomegranate. But they look neat. And I would try one. Because here at DMIC Industries, we are open to all kinds of things. Our mind is so open. When it comes to fruit, we will swing all kinds of weights. I like fruit. I don't go out of my way to eat fruit because I don't really like sweet things. But I like the idea of fruit. I would always try one if someone's like, hey, I would like you to try this fruit. And I'd be like, you know what? Okay. I will indulge. And participate. So here's Mime Jr. Added in this game as one of the few kind of baby Pokemon, if you want to say it like that. It is the pre evolution to Mr. Mime, if you couldn't have guessed. Along with. I think this guy has the other one, and if he does, then I'm not going to go ahead and ruin it. I'll just mention it when I see it. It had a partner Pokemon pulled in. And it does. Bonsly. 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 I don't know how you say it. This is the pre-evolution to Suda Widow, which I think is really great. I remember they showed the the silhouettes of Bonsly and of Mr. Mime. Or Mime Jr., sorry. Sorry. And I remember there was a lot of contention on what these things would actually look like. People were trying to fill in the blanks of what Bonsly and Mime Jr. would look like, and some of the attempted designs were... They missed the mark. Also, that guy looks like somebody that I work with. Anyway, let's see if there's anything else down around here. Okay, so we were told not to say anything, but we got an odd keystone. Potentially a keystone light. Would be nice. Fair to that. This is Route 208, heading east into Hearthome. Dude, this lady looks fancy pants. Talk to her. So Hearthome is all about super contests. And these people love them. They are big old fans. Which is great. But first. A rogue Buneri. That's right. Who knew how far her Buneri would very slowly run away? She's a super contest judge, and she wants us to come and see her. So, we will do that. Kira, Kyra, however you say that name. Let's talk to everybody. Who doesn't want to do that? So here's Hearthome City. It is interesting. I don't know if this place has a gym or not, I don't remember. But we're gonna be here a little bit because these guys are blocking the way. And Instead, we are offered a Pokemon egg, but we can't do anything about it because we don't have enough space. So we'll come back for that. If you want a free Pokemon egg, it's always the same Pokemon in that egg. So go for it if you want. Oh, there's a guy from Hoenn. That's the Ruby Sapphire Emerald generation. He wants to show us to the concert hall. No, yes. Please mind your own business, thank you. Somebody with some courtesy. There's a Pokemon fan club? Let's check this out. This sounds fun. Everybody here with like the kind of chibi sprites, even the old people, they look kind of creepy. Like they look like kids dressing up as old people. So this is the Pokemon fan club chairman. And he wants Pofins. So that's a way that you can Increase your stats for contests. So if you're into that, you'll be given a Pofin case. And you can use berries to make those. It is... It is certainly a thing that I will do probably once to show it and be horrible at it. Okay, so Brandy feeling pretty neutral towards us. That's okay, Brandy's kind of new. Therefore neutral. Understandable. Let's continue our exploration of this contestual city. It's always good to go and talk to 
as many NPCs as you can. You might miss out on a cool item or a collectible. And you don't want that. And sometimes they just say a bunch of random nonsense that you don't care about. So we will continue to do that. Talk to everybody we can. This condominium that only apparently has two floors, which is great. And there you go. Example, Shell Bell. You don't come here, you don't get yourself a Shell Bell. And I noticed it looked like they were, there was an advertisement for Team Galactic on this TV. Interesting. Let's roll on up on this combi. Great. That was scintillating. So yeah, sometimes when you catch combi, you'll wind up getting a free jar of honey to slather all over that bar. If you're into that. Isn't that great? That is wonderful. This lady has a baby. A papu papu. Whatever that means. So this lady says that she's a little more vigilant when she's got her, uh, her baby and she there is a gym in this in this area but we won't be able to do much with it yet because the gym leader is not present okay uh hey game spoilers geez so here is the contest hall which we will not do anything with yet that'll probably be at the beginning of the next episode because it's a little bit of a doozy so instead, we're going to talk to everybody. We are Papa and Mama to our Pokemon. Okay. Single mom, single dad. Oh, excuse you. That child has a potty mouth. Pokemon coordinator. They lean really heavily into this here. And I love naps, by the way. They lean really heavily into this in this specific town. But in Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's because you're a nerd anyway. It was a big part of that game. That's where they introduced it. There were like different levels of contests and different places you could go and ribbons you could earn. It is definitely a different dynamic. But if you're not into that, it was a lot. Okay, so it sounds like Hearth Home is friendly to everybody. Interesting. Looks like this is a bit of a retirement home. All these gray tops just hanging out here on the second floor of this two floor condo. A little bit of more mobility here with this elevator here. This is great. This is very captivating gameplay. Hope you guys are enjoying this exploration of this very welcoming, as we learned, city. Very welcoming. We've got a few more places to explore here. There's a Pokemon Center. We'll go to that in a moment. Probably wrap up with that. Ooh, it looks like it looks like this is where BB lives. Yeah. We sure are. The one and only we are in his company. Always running her mouth. Silly BB. And she's the one who let us put stickers on our balls. Which we will do eventually. And she's the admin of the Pokemon Center PCs. So she's a woman in the field of IT. Good for her. Breaking gender norms. And this looks like a church. Interesting to be included in a Pokemon game. Kind of neat having the shallow depth of field here. Mount Coronet at the top. Okay. All right, this this town is a bit of a bummer. Some of these people are like, yeah, this is a great place to live. And other people are like, nobody likes me. All right, bunch of wet blankets and hearth home. My goodness. Always look for the good inside of them. So that's a good message about life. But some Pokemon suck, so you can definitely judge them. So that lady has it wrong. This is all super cryptic and weird. 
Okay, let's get the heck out of here. I'm getting very spoopy vibes. No music, no nothing going on in that place. This is this is all very random. I'm not entirely sure what's happening. <laughs> Talking about your Pokemon stroller getting heavier with your fat baby. Okay. Oh, so maybe contests don't aren't where we do Pokemon. Maybe this is where it is. All right. I'd like to cook. We need to cook. Okay. Um, I like pineapple. This sounds kind of like pineapple. So let's. Oh, you have to do multiple pineapples and bananas, and how about some raspberries? Man, nah, berry. Is this it? I would love to start cooking with it. I have no idea what I'm doing, by the way. Prepare yourselves for mediocrity. Yay! They all get put into the goo. What do I do? Okay. Well, I'm stirring. I'm stirring that goo. With my big stick. Spinning it around. Okay. Oh. Maybe we do it fast, huh? Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Oh no, I'm spinning my- I'm spilling my goo. You gotta do- you gotta shoot your goo at the right pace. Okay. This feels like we're baking a bread. Isn't this fun, everybody? Don't you love this? Isn't this a great way to spend your time? Imagine if you actually really cared about this. You'd be suing Nintendo for how sore the palms of your hands are gonna get from playing this gosh dang game. That looks like baby food. Or like a little kid was like, hey, oh. Are we doing good? It'll burn if we don't hurry. I'm gonna spin our goo quick. I'm trying to go quick. All right, is that a good, is is that good? We made a spicy poffin. Guys, we did it. Poffins, no. I don't want to do that again, actually. That was horrible. Okay, so you want to churn it fast when it's when it's nice and hard. Gotcha. Okay, thanks, lady. Okay, so this couple is all about nutrition. You don't want to spill your batter, especially not on your friends. Or maybe you do. Maybe your friends are into you spilling batter on them. All right, so we got one last place to go before we further the story along. Of course it will. You should definitely put stickers on your balls. It makes you a lot of cuter. So this is Amity Square. This is where the origin of cute comes to reside. So this is an interesting area that we're going to explore briefly. And you'll see why for a moment. Let's see, what's our cutest Pokemon? Dimitri looks pretty cute. All right. So now we have the ability to walk around with Dimitri by our side, floating around all cute. Oh, okay. So this area is kind of weird, but it has Volt Switch, which is awesome. You definitely want to come here if, you, if you'd like that, TM. I'm not entirely sure the overall point of this area, besides flexing on how cute everything is. Aside from what you're going to see in a moment, if you've played Heart Gold or Soul Silver, you'll understand the value of having your Pokemon follow you. We got a Spoopy Plate. Okay, great. That is nothing. Ooh, there's a Pokeball in this. I see it. And the Amulet Coin. Interesting. Amulet Coin is an item when held. It doubles the amount of money that you can steal from your opponent when you beat him. So you can double steal their lunch money. And you can make more Pofins. No thanks. Two TMs in here. So this is a nice little area to go to. Pick up some items. Talk to people about cute Pokemon. There's a Happiny. That is the, you definitely always want to have a Happini. This is the uh, pre-evolution to Chansey. So that looks like that's pretty good. I am feeling pretty refreshed. Thank you. And it seems like we are a special trainer. I would definitely say that we're a pretty special trainer. 
so now that we've visited Amity Square, we have the ability to have our Pokemon follow us. Isn't that amazing? And you might wonder, okay, is it just the Pokemon that are eligible? No, it's any Pokemon. Yay, look guys, we did it. So if you've played Heart Gold or Soul Silver, this is a really popular mechanic that I enjoyed personally. I thought it was really cool to have any Pokemon follow you around. So you can have anyone that you want. So we can have Samuel goo his way around town. Oh, look how gooey he is. He's so slimy. Great. So that was fun. And next time, we'll see what this city has to do with these heckin' contests. So thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I'll see you next time. Bye.